Hi, my name is Solomon, and today I will walk you through how to do perception on either our standalone Innerbotics arm or an Innerbotics arm on our Locobot. This tutorial assumes that you have already tuned your point cloud filter parameters. If you have not yet done that, please watch our video on tuning filter parameters located in the description. For this tutorial, you will also need a computer running Ubuntu Linux and ROS, also have our Innerbotics ROS ARM packages installed. You will also need a Innerbotics ARM or Locobot and a color depth camera. Besides for those, you will also need some objects, some small objects that your ARM can pick up and a small container or basket that the ARM can drop the objects into. For the first part of this tutorial, we will be running the pickplace.py Python script. This is located in the scripts directory in the Innerbotics XSR and Perception ROS package. It looks like this, this script over here. For this script to work correctly, you will need to have the, the setup as shown here. For, uh, specifically, the arm should be located to the left of the camera. Now let's walk through this script to show you what every single line of code does and then we're going to run the code and you'll see how it does it in real time. First we instantiate a instance of the robot. In this case we're using a Widow X200 robot. We set the moving time to be one and a half seconds so that each motion takes one and a half seconds and half of that time is going to be spent accelerating and half of that time is going to be spent decelerating. This allows us to have very smooth motion. We are also going to instantiate a point cloud interface instance and an arm tag interface instance. Both of these modules can be found can, can be found in the Innerbotics ROS in in the Innerbotics um, perception toolbox directory located in the Innerbotics ROS toolboxes repository. The point cloud interface module allows us to get the locations of the different clusters that are found by the camera. And the arm tag interface class mod uh, module allows us to determine where the arm is with, with respect to the camera. So if you have already used the arm tag tuner GUI to capture where the arm is with respect to the camera, then you can comment out this line of code here, as well as these four lines of code here. But for the sake of this tutorial, I will leave them in. After instantiating those uh, objects. We're going to call this line of code. This will bring the arm out of its cradle and open the gripper in this line. Next, the arm will move so that the AR tag <clears throat> is within the field of view of the camera. We will sleep for half a second just to make sure that there's no residual movement. And then finally, we will call the find ref to arm base transform function. This is a function in the arm tag module that will capture the position of the arm with respect to the camera. You can see the module over here and specifically the function defined here. Two specific parameters I wanna mention that are located in this function are the ref frame and arm base frame parameters. The ref frame is defaulting, um, is configured in our launch file to default to camera color optical frame and the arm base frame is by default uh, set in the launch file to be the WX200 base link frame. And the launch file specifically that I'm talking about is over here, over here, the XSR perception launch file. And you can see those parameters defined over here, the ref frame and the arm base frame. Um, like I said, by default, these parameters are set. Uh, to have the camera color optical frame and the Widow X200 base link frame as their values. So when you actually call the function, you can call it without any arguments. And by default, this is what you will do in almost all situations. If you are planning on calibrating where the arm is with respect to the camera in code. All right, so after capturing this transform, you're then going to move the arm out of the way of the camera. And that's what this line does. And once the, once the arm is out of line of the camera and the camera has an unobstructed view of the different objects located on the table, you will call 
the get cluster positions function. This function returns a list of dictionaries. Each dictionary represents information for a single cluster. So in our case, I have six small cubes, so we will have a list of six dictionaries where each dictionary represents one of those cubes. Some of the information in the dictionary is the name of the cluster, the uh, position of the cluster, um, the size, how many points there are that represent that cluster, as well as the average RGB value of the cluster. Um, besides for returning this list, which is clusters, you will also have a Boolean called success that will tell you whether or not the, uh, um, the function was able to find all of the clusters. Um, let's just take a look at these parameters. So the ref frame here is set to widow x200 base link frame. You will always want to set ref frame here to be the frame of reference that the IK is done in. For the case of our arms, this will always be the base link frame. Um, and the reason for this is you want to specify all the cluster positions relative to the base frame, the base link frame, which is the IK frame, so that you know where the arm should move to pick up those clusters. As far as what the sort axis and reverse parameters mean, so like I said, all of these clusters are defined relative to the ref frame. Um, but each of these clusters have a position with respect to this frame. And for convenience, it might be nice to sort them. So in this case, you can sort, you can have, you can sort them either by the x-axis of the reference frame, the y-axis, or the z-axis. So if I set it to x-axis like I do in this case, so then it will give me a list of dictionaries where the first dictionary will have the minimum x position. And the last element, the last dictionary in the list will have the maximum x value. Reverse though, if reverse is set to true, it will reverse that whole entire list. So instead of going from min to max in the x along the x axis, it will sort from the maximum x axis to the minimum x axis. So the max x x the max x position, um, the cluster with the max x position will be first in the list. Once we get those clusters, we then go through the list of dictionaries, and for each of the dictionaries, we get the position of the cluster. We tell the arm where to go um, as far as the X and Y position goes, and we tell it to go to the Z position, but it should go five centimeters above just so there's a little bit of clearance. And then in the next line, we set it to, we set Z equals to Z so that it actually gra um, lowers the gripper so that it's so that the, ob the object is within the gripper fingers. We close the gripper and then we do the opposite. We bring it up five centimeters high just so it clears the table. And then we tell the arm to go to more of a neutral pose where it then proceeds to open the gripper and drops the object into the basket. After doing that for each of the clusters, it then goes to sleep. Um, okay. So just to show you, um, this get cluster positions function is located here, and you can see there's a lot of um, documentation for what each of these parameters do. Um, one other parameter I just want to mention is the is parallel parameter. If your arm base link frame is parallel to your tabletop surface, so this will be set to true. In the case of your standalone arm, if it's on a tabletop surface, this will always be set to true. But if your arm is for whatever reason located on a wall, like you bolt it down to a wall, then you would have to set this to false. So what is parallel does when it's set to true is um, by default, we the, the point cloud, um, the get cluster positions function, by default, will find where the centroid of each of the clusters are, the XYZ centroid for each of the clusters. Uh, but for clearance reasons, you might want to know where the top of that cluster is. So for example, if you wanted the arm to, um, to pick up the cluster from the top, to pick up the object from the top, you would set the, uh, you'd want to know where the top of the cluster is. So by setting is parallel is equal to true, the Z 
part of the position that's returned to the user for that specific cluster will define where the top of the cluster is. But if this is set to false, then Z will represent the average height of that cluster. And that's something I'll point out to you when we actually run this demo, which we will do right now. So open up a terminal by pressing Control Alt T on the keyboard and then typing ROS launch inner botics XS arm perception XS arm perception dot launch robot model is equal to W X 200. Like I said, we're using a widow X 200 arm in this case, but you would use whatever model you currently have. Um, and we're also going to set enable pipeline is equal to true. By default, this is false. And what this uh, parameter does is it starts, um, it runs all those filters that you saw before in, in the point cloud tuner GUI. Um, by uh, when it's set to true, it'll do that in it'll do that in real time. Uh, the problem with that is it's extremely processor intensive. So if you don't need it to be running, there's no reason for you to have it running. Um, and it's only when you actually call the get cluster positions function, for example, that's when uh, it'll call the function that has this perception pipeline, so to speak. But in order for you to visualize better what, uh, what is going on, I'm setting it to true. So we press enter. And here we go. Let's just do a little bit of configuring to Arviz here. All right, so looks like we have a clear view of the objects and we can get rid of the crap box marker. Here's the objects and none of the spherical markers are blinking. So I was telling you before about this is parallel part for the get cluster positions. So the transform returned if is parallel is false. So the transform returned for each of these markers will appear at the exact same spot as the spherical markers. But if is parallel is true, for example, for this marker here, the Z, the X and Y part of the transform will correspond to the X and Y transform of the spherical marker. But the Z part will correspond to hopefully one of the tallest points here in the point cloud. Okay, so now let's run the script. Open up the terminal, press Control Shift T to open up uh, another terminal in the same window. Now let us go into the inner botics XS arm perception package, specifically into the scripts directory. And we're going to be running the Python pick place.py script. So press enter. So we just did the calibration and here are all those TFs that I mentioned to you before of the different clusters. Since we're sorting based on maximum position, so cluster one will be the furthest in the X direction and the last cluster, in this case, cluster six, will have the minimum X position. And then you have cluster two, three, four, five, like that. You will also see that all of these TFs are located at the top of each of their clusters, like I mentioned to you earlier, because is parallel is set to true. These are temp these TFs aren't going to be showing up in Arvis the whole entire time. They fade away after um, I think I set the timeout to about 30 seconds, or maybe it's like 45 seconds. Um, they're not saved to the static tf tree or anything like that all right so that's it for the standalone arms next i will talk to you about how to run this with um with the interbotics arm on a locobot the python api can also be used on a locobot platform in this specific case we will be working with this python script called pick place no arm tag dot pi this is located in the interbotics xs locobot perception ros package in the scripts directory so walking through it, you should we instantiate an instance of the local bot in the first line of the function he, uh, of the main function here. We then pan and tilt the uh, camera um, so that it's pointing down. 
Then we get the cluster positions, just like we did with the standalone arms. In this case, we are having a different reference frame. It's the Locobot arm base link frame. Um, and also the sort axis is Y instead of X. We'll see how that looks in Arviz. Finally, we take the arm out of its sleep position and we open its gripper to get ready to pick up the objects. And just like we saw before with the standalone arm, it goes to the motion for each um, dictionary item in the, in the clusters list. It'll go to the X and Y position of that cluster. Then... Um, and five centimeters above it and then it'll lower five centimeters close the gripper in this line of code and then go up five centimeters and then move to the left side of the robot where it opens the gripper and drops in this case a small block into a little uh, basket after doing that it um, goes to a neutral pose and then back to its sleep pose so let's run it uh, for this specific case, I'm working on my personal laptop uh, and I'm going to be SSHing into the Locobot over a, uh, over a little hotspot I created that just my laptop and the Locobot is connected to. So let's open up a terminal by pressing Control alt or pressing the terminal GUI on the, in the desktop bar. And then we're going to type SSH-X Locobot at locobot.i.local. Um, I explained in a previous video, I'm using Locobot I in this case, just because we have a lot of Locobots in the, in the office. And just to differentiate this one from all the others, I added an I. But in your case, you will be using locobot.local. Um, and then we're going to press enter. Yes, password is, is Locobot. All right. So now what I'm going to do is launch an instance of GNOME Terminal just so that I don't have to SSH every time I want to get into the Locobot. By bringing up um, GNOME Terminal like this, I can create as many tabs as I want and they will all be on the Locobot. Okay, so now let's launch um, the uh, perception stuff. So Ross launch Innerbotics. XS Locobot control, XS Locobot Python dot launch, robot model is equal to Locobot WX200. I'm using the Widow X200 Locobot, but if you're using a different one, you would enter it here. Um, we're also going to enable the pipeline just so we can, like we did with the standalone. So that's going to be true. We also had to tell the launch file that we plan on using Perception since this is a generic uh, launch file that allows you to uh, start up either Perception or Navigation or working with the base um, or just working with the arm. So we're going to tell it that we want to use Perception. Um, and we're not going to be using the arm tag stuff in this case, like I explained in a previous video, uh, because in for the Locobot, we already know where the transform is. We already know the transform from the camera to the to the uh, to the arm space link. Um, okay, so after doing that, let us click enter. You might see this warning about no stream matches for point cloud chosen texture. That's just a warning from RealSense, but it doesn't affect the usage of the robot at all. So then we press Control Shift T to open up a terminal. Um, and we're going to change into the directory for the where the Python script is. So ROS CD, Innerbotics, XS Locobot, Perception, and Scripts. All right. So now let's get Arbiz loaded on our remote computer. Um, so I'm going to Control Shift T on this terminal here, and this will bring me to a my own terminal on my computer, Demo Comp. We're going to type ROS launch innerbotics XS Locobot descriptions remote view dot launch robot model is equal to Locobot WX200. Arvis frame in this case, we're going to set to Locobot base footprint. We're not doing any navigation, so we can just use this um, and click enter. All right. 
So here is Arvis. Let's just configure it a little bit. Perception up there. Get the camera here. Uh, take out the raw point cloud. Don't need that. Raise this a bit so we can see everything. All right. Oh, we also don't need the crop box marker. And let's just look at, so here are the six different spherical markers representing each of our clusters. And we've already tuned the filter parameters and they look to be pretty good. Here is our object cloud. All right. So at this point, we're ready to roll with the Python script. So let's bring up that terminal. So Python pick place no arm tag dot pi enter and it's just going to run the script we have our six different transforms here and you can see a live view in the bottom left here of your screen um, just a note when you're doing your setup, if you're if you're working over SSH, you should make sure that your ROS master URI variable in your bash RC file on your personal computer is uh, pointing to lo the local bot computer, and you should also have your have installed the remote ARM software packages on your personal computer as well. Just one left to go. And that's all six. Okay, so we'll just close that off. Control C. And then the Python script already finished executing. Let's control C out of um, the launch file. All right. And that's how to work with the Python API to do perception on both the standalone Interbotics ARM or on our local bot platforms. See you next time.